Okay, so thank you everybody. Thank you for the presentation. So I'm going to talk first a bit about a layer that means ADA library repository. And the talk has three parts. That's why we have, we are three people. I'll first uh, talk a, a bit about general things about the project, how it started, where it's now, and a bit of the internals. And then comes the fun part, which are two demos, one about how to begin a project with a liar, and another one on how to contribute your projects to a liar. So let's go. Uh, yeah. Why in the first place this project exists? Well, I think that um, nowadays, every language, every platform has a, a way of uh, installing dependencies, installing, installing other projects. And the truth is that uh, we have become used to be able to do this. Yes? Oh, sorry. <laughs> and, well, this is true for, for more, for young languages, but it's also true by for other well-established languages and platforms. So a question that gets asked from time to time is, how do you in ADA find new projects to use or how to install dependencies? And uh, well, we have to say there is no way in ADA, you have to fish the projects around and install them manually and then you can use them. Uh, and the truth is that when I started this project, there was, to my knowledge, no related projects for, for ADA, besides the outstanding efforts for De Debian, which has very good support for ADA packages. Then there is a project from uh, the BSD guy, Luis Merino, I think it's the name, which is a kind of system package manager, so it's not for ADA but it has very good support for ADA packages. And then we have now a layer, which is really oriented to, to support the, the ADA world. So another mo more for them. And then besides the, the expect expectancy of having this or the comfort of having this, there are real advantages on using package manager. Uh, for starters, um, it simplifies reusing code if you are aware that other libraries exist and you can install them quickly and easily. And also if libraries are classified with proper descriptions and tags, you are more likely to find something that you can reuse instead of rolling your own solution. Um, a, cl a cross platform library manager will help you in making your libraries available in a number of platforms, not only in the, on the platform you are working. It can help into providing reproducible builds if you say this uh, project builds with those dependencies and if you build them, you will get the same binary that I am providing for download. You can verify that you are using the proper dependencies. And finally, in and the fast evolving world of of software, it might help on updating your dependencies when new bugs are found, vulnerabilities, and so on. You d you just da do an update and you get all the new versions of libraries if they are properly maintained, and you get a fixed executable. And well, that's about the motivation. But now moving in particular into an uh, to our project. Mm. I just checked for the for preparing this talk. Um, when this all started, and the, the community has debated the, from time to time about this, but it was now, it's crazy, but it's now four years ago that uh, I opened the first repository to have discussions about this, and we had some talks also in the news group. Then for two years, nothing else happened. And then is when I sent the first version to Ada Europe, which was rejected properly because it was really rough at, the t at that point in time. Um, th the same year in 2018, I, I did a research visit uh, with AdaCore and for other matters that you saw this morning, if you were here. 
and that gave us the opportunity to talk about the, the that the ADA community was asking for a, a project manager. There was none. ADA Core was also interested in having something for this. So from from that we kept in touch, and last year ADA Core also g gave support to the project, uh, which allowed me to work more time on it, and also people from ADA Core is also contributing now so that it's not a single single person effort uh, anymore and just a couple of months ago um uh, fabian i think it was you that you invited some people to start testing the project to find uh, what's what's uh, okay and what's missing and to have new point of view and so on and he also suggested that today is a good day to, uh, since we are in a developer uh, environment, to announce that uh, we can start the public beta. So all feedback is welcome. In particular, uh, uh, we are developing on, li on Linux, so feedback from Windows and Mac OS is uh, more more needed, and and so it is. That's uh, from the historical point of view. But in terms of, of functionality, <coughs> my personal feeling is that uh, right now is when the project is starting to come together in the sense that it's starting to be really useful. As part of the of the closed beta, we got many contributions of projects that, of course, people in the ADA world know that are that exist. But now they they are starting to be accessible through a layer. And also, um, we have a better picture of what is missing versus what is done, because uh, up to this point, um, at some time, sometimes I felt like a programmer doing a programming a game, but not playing his, his own game because he's busy programming the game. And so I'm doing the things in a layer, and I always use the same features, but uh, I don't have the perspective of other people. And this internal beta and the collaboration with uh, with Ada Core has given me a much better perspective on what's missing and what can be done. So, for the immediate future, um, well, of course, what can be done you are going to see firsthand from the demonstration, and and I will talk just a bit about some basic capabilities. But um, if everything goes to plan, I expect that uh, 2020 is going to be a very big year for the project because with this knowledge and and the momentum we have gained in the past year i think we are going to close the biggest holes in the in the project and so uh, some things can be done but are very inconvenient to do right now like the publishing workflow it's a bit uh, mm, you can do it but it requires some knowledge and some, well, you will see. And and there are features that we want to have that are not there, like reproducible builds, for example. And as I said, uh, well, if uh, we want to also put out the first uh, sta stable release with uh, binaries, uh, the project is already compiling in the three platforms. It's going through continuous integration. Um, but as I, as I said, we are using it mainly in Linux, so feedback from the other platforms will be very welcome. And that's more or less how the project is right now. Um, you are going to see two demos. I had planned to do a little uh, demonstration, but uh, the computer is offline. I'm not going to do it, but the gist of this demonstration was that even if you are not a, an ADA developer, or you don't want to use ADA dependencies, a layer may serve to test ADA software in a simple simple way. By using the get uh, command, you retrieve all the sources needed to build the project with all the dependencies, and you can test it immediately. So, uh, I mean, that even if you are not interested in learning about a layer or digging into ADA development, this is a tool. This can be done already, I mean. And of course, you can search the projects uh, that are available. Well, moving a bit into how the project is is done, 
I'll talk about a few interna th internal things and, and I will explain. Uh, for starters, the project is in GitHub. Uh, there are several repositories that you can find there, all under the umbrella of the Alliar project, project. And they contain the community index, the main executable and library, and other supporting projects. And here, a note about terminology. In the Alliar index uh, repository, we have the community index. What those mean? The community index is uh, all composed of open source projects, contributed projects. Alliar supports uh, handling several indexes. If, for example, you have private indexes with your private software that you don't want to publish, or that is not ready for publication yet, or things like that. So this kind is the kind of the official uh, index from the project. Then we have uh, two ADA projects that for now live in the same repository. I guess at some point they will have to split, but for now we have a library component that could be used maybe to create a nicer interface. And then we have the command line tool that in the spirit of other tools like uh, Git and so on, it's a three letter command. I find myself sometimes mixing the Git and Alliar commands already. And well, that's the, a note about terminology. And what kind of uh, package manager is a liar? Of the many possibilities, well, a liar is a sandbox in the sense that it's, it's not going to touch your system. It will create a folder. Inside that folder, you have everything you need for the current project you are working on. It's oriented towards the Ada language. We are doing it uh, for the open source Ada compiler, which is uh, GNAT. And so it's not intended to, to manage a a platform uh, or, or a system, but only to give you development for Ada. It works with sources. Uh, Ada is highly portable, so there is no pressure to distribute binaries. Uh, everything is downloaded and compiled. And finally, it's a community effort in the sense that there is no, it's not sanctioned by any official Ada body in the sense that, for example, Rust uh, Cargo is part of the tooling of the language officially. So that's where Alliar is located. Uh, well, Alliar, um, if you have worked with uh, package managers, it reuses the same ideas, uh, which is uh, named releases with semantic versions. And we, we use the term create to really refer to, a, to a several releases from the same project because the other possible names are taken in the Ada world for very precise uh, meanings. This was a kind of maybe controversial decision, but it has a very precise meaning that other developers know, so that's how it is. Semantic versioning, you, I'm sure you know, that is the way to ensure that you can update your packages without breaking the build if everything is properly packaged. So I will not stop too much here. And well, here we see an example of how dependencies uh, are realized once you retrieve a project. We, we can specify that we need two libraries and those libraries are solved uh, recursively incorporating their own dependencies. Finally, you reach a combination of dependencies that allow the build. The solver in a layer is complete, so if there is a solution, it so should find it. And uh, to conclude, here's how it looks on disk when you work in a, in a project. You have your project with your files, whatever you want, and everything else is within an layer folder, which is intended to be put into the ignore list of your version control system, so you don't need to know anything about Ada internals, uh, Alliar internals. And in there you can find mainly the dependencies that are needed to build your project. And this is the end of my introduction. Now I leave you with Fabien and Pierre-Marie. Okay. So do you? So Pierre Marie will be uh, typing for me. Uh, will be a little bit. Oh. Sorry, let me try to fix that. Okay. 
so the first demo is going to show how great uh, package manager, uh, especially Alayer, is to start prototyping projects in Ada. Uh, so there are many libraries available uh, on the web for Ada, but the fact that they are all uh, in Alayer makes them very easy to use, uh, and so very easy to create a new uh, project quickly. Uh, so the project that we are going to do uh, is going to take, uh, going to read a configuration file in a TOML format and generate a PDF with uh, a square in it. And the color of the square will depend on the configuration in the TOML file. Uh, so first, we're going to start by creating a project. So Pierre Marie will use the alayer init uh, command, uh, spec specifying bin because it's going to be an executable. Uh, otherwise, it would be uh, lib. So okay, you can you can create that if you oh. go. <laughs> ah yeah, demo effect. <laughs> so you do have so yeah you do have to right now you have to uh, compile a layer yourself uh, because oh, we okay. don't have binary release yet, and of course you have to add it in your path. So the project is created now. So if you go to the to the my project uh, directory, uh, so Alayer is already creating some. Uh, uh, base uh, files for us. Uh, so we can already do a layer build to compile it. That should, that should work. Uh, so now I want to, so I want to have a TOML file as input. So I'm going to search in a layer to find uh, if there's something available. So a layer list. So here we, we use a, a, a local index to uh, not rely on the network for this demo. So there's only what we need. Uh, actually, we're missing. A few characters on the left, but there's there's an uh, Ada Tomel, uh project here, so that's exactly what I need. Uh, so uh, Pierre Marie will add. Ah, oh, what's going on? I'm doing. <laughs> I wanted to. Uh, to Huge. Well, I think it's going to be okay. Uh, so yes, right. right, perfect. So now we want to use the Ada Tomel parser. So we are going to specify that it's a dependency of our project with the uh, the with command. So alayer with Ada Tomel. Uh, and so that's it. Uh, so here everything is local, but oh, otherwise you would download the, the the sources from the from the network. But here everything is local. So now we can open the the project file and add uh, the dependency in the project file. So with uh, that tunnel. That's it. Okay, and now you can close and recompile, and now we we can compile with uh, the dependency. Uh, so Alayer will also compile the the tunnel library. Uh, and so now we can start working in our source file. Uh, and uh, first we will with the 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 add a tunnel package. Uh, maybe Pierre Marie, you can start. Copy paste from yeah. from the from the thing we prepared. That would be easier. Um, so yeah, we're gonna weave the TOML file uh, and also uh, add a text IO to have some text output. Okay, uh, we're gonna create a, a, a result uh, variable. Actually, it's a constant. Uh, that is, is, this is the result of opening a, a, a TOML file. So that's the uh, Adatomel API, uh, and then yeah, the first uh, the first if statement uh, we're gonna check if we we could uh, open or not the the, the Tomel file. So yeah, uh, okay. So now we can go back to the to the command line, and you can compile the the project. Okay, everything works fine. And if you do alayer uh, run. Uh, this will uh, actually execute uh, our program, and of course we don't have any Tomel config file, so we see the the error ici, here. So uh, now you can open a config.toml uh, file, create a config.toml file, and we are going to put some uh, parameters in it. So we are going to set uh, RGB values uh, in floating points. So uh, for instance, R just R equals uh, 0 0.5. And uh, g equals zero zero, and uh, b equals zero zero, for instance. So that's our thermal configuration. So you can close, and if you run again, this time we should be able to uh, load the thermal. 
So now we have the ability to load a configuration very quickly, and now we want to have the possibility to export to a PDF. So we are going to look in the, uh, in the list of projects that we have uh, in, uh, in Alayer, and we see that we, that's very nice. Uh, thank you, Gauthier. We have uh, a project to uh, generate PDFs. So same procedure, Alayer with uh, a PDF. So now it's a dependency. We can open yet again the, the project file to add this in our project. Uh, no, I don't think the name is the same. Actually, you have to look on the ah. uh, PDF out, I think. Yeah, PDF out the nuts. Yeah. Uh, so you can remove a PDF. <coughs> OK, nice. Uh, now with the go back to the to the source file, uh, we can uh, copy past the value. So here uh, we are reading. So from from the from the Tommel result, we are going to get the R, G, and B uh, value and convert to uh, PDF output uh, real types. So this is reading the the configuration from the from the the Tommel file. To the end, and then we open. Uh, yeah, we create a PDF. Uh, we set the color from the configuration, and we draw uh, a rectangle, and we close the PDF. So if you save and uh, do a layer run, actually, because a layer run will also try to build uh, before, uh, and hopefully this is going to work. And if you open the PDF. We should have a uh, somewhat uh, red square. Uh, so that's it for the demo. Just to show you how uh, quickly we can prototype stuff with a layer. That's otherwise it would would have been possible before, but you would have to search on GitHub and download things, and you don't know how to install them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, with this, it's uh, extremely quick uh, to do so. And so now to Pierre Marie for. Uh, now that you have uh, benefited from the contribution of the community, how you can uh, now contribute back? OK, thank you, Fabien. <clears throat> so yes, we have this great project. And now we want to uh, make it available for the outer world. So there are several steps to do it. So <clears throat> I won't do it here because uh, I'm offline, but the step is to first clone the Git repository that contains every uh, catalog of every uh, ADA project registered in Alaya. Then you add this uh, index you make, uh, or it should be, should be Alaya, uh, AL, ALI here. <laughs> Three letter acronyms. Anyway, uh, you make a layer uh, aware of this index that you have cloned. And then you have to so write some configuration file to describe the project that you want to make available to uh, the outer world. So this, uh, this file, has, is, so it's a, it's a TOML, uh, TOML file. TOML is a, it's a, it's a, it's a syntax that looks like any files for those who, uh, who know it. And it's very simple, but most importantly, so what what data you have to put in the re, in the in the file? It's described in a in a in a document that uh, describes all your what you need what you need to uh, to put there. And so yeah, uh, so we'll do this in a moment. But just for the what we have to do, so it's we, we want to put uh, the name of the project that we want to contribute to. Uh, to contribute uh, some kind of text, uh, free proposed text to uh, to describe what the project is about. We can put a website. We can uh, give a list of authors. We have also a list of what we call maintainers. So it's the people that. So you, when you write TML file in uh, in Alayers, uh, TML files in Alayers, it's uh, you are a maintainer. You have you are the person not necessarily that wrote the project that, but the person who make this project available to, uh, to the other world. You are the maintainer. Uh, and yes, and really specific. So 
generally, uh, software evolves. You don't want to. Uh, so you, when you publish a project, it's the first version, version, but you want sometimes to publish other versions, uh, updates, and so. In, in, uh, in the index, you have one file that describes all the, the, the various releases. And so it's time to, uh, to do the demo. OK, so as I said, I won't, I won't do the, uh, the, the, the regular clone because I don't have internet here. But up. OK, so we have this nice project. And actually, the index, a fake version of the index, is here. So what does the index looks like? More like this. So each TML file describes one project that is made available. Uh, you have this, this file that is a, a kind of manifest. And here, well, this is not what you should have usually. I mean, this, uh, these two archives are the sources of the project we want to contribute. You are not supposed to put them in the index. In the index, you put uh, you say, oh, okay, this uh, this source package for so for the release one of my project is well done. Load it on GitHub on from somewhere else. But here we put there here just because uh, of the demo effect. We don't want to rely on the internet uh, on being able to reach the internet. All right. So I don't know the format the format by heart, and I think nobody should uh, bother uh, actually learning it. So I just take uh, another uh, something else as an example and write my own. So um, yes, first of all, so my project is called my project. So I'll create a directory to put. Ah. All right, so I'm creating uh, this file to describe my project. So first of all, I have to put some general information about the project. So I can pay, put a description. Uh, here we are. So who wrote this library? Well, it's Fabien. Thank you. <laughs> you are the author. On the other hand, I am the maintainer. So because I'm, I'm the one writing the terminal file, And something important, it's the logins, because the, um, so this is my, uh, my login on GitHub. The contributing to the community, community index uh, on GitHub is special. Um, we are making up rules so that uh, when you write, uh, when you contribute a project, you are the only one able to modify it in the future. And uh, so putting my login here, make sure that future contributions to this file will be, uh, only I will be able to do them. All right, so now I give the list of project files that are part of this, uh, of my project. So here it's simple. Ah. All right, uh, license, I don't think it's, it's optional, okay because we haven't chosen the license for your project, so yeah. no, li no license. All right. And then, so this is the first release of this magnificent project. So this is release uh, 0.1. And oh. So yes, I need to create a source package so that a layer uh, can uh, pull the get the sources from somewhere. So let's create a source package. I'll be right back. So my project is inside my project folder. So let's do this. Ah. Oh, I should have written. If you want to do things right. OK, so we have a source package. Actually, I should have, sorry about this. I should have removed the allier directory in it because it's not supposed to be part of the sources. All right, so I recreate my source package and then moving it to the index. 
again, you should, you're, this specific part, you're not supposed to do it. Uh, you just publish uh, a, a source archive somewhere on the internet. It's just fine. But here, we don't have internet. With, with GitHub, it's really easy to push uh, an archive on, on the repository. So All right. That's what we recommend. I don't want to, uh, to make typos. All right, so back to my description. Uh, so, so it's a local file. There I am. All right. So now my uh, my software is registered in uh, in the index. Let's try to uh, to actually use it. And oh, the maintainer should be an email. Okay. So yeah, there's there's a lot of checks on what needs to be on the required fields, etc. So don't don't worry too much. Uh, we will check before we add your uh, your toml file in the index. And yes, something important. So I gave the uh, a source archive, but Alayer wants to wants you to put some uh, uh, checksum integrity so that. Uh, so that when it downloads the source, it, it needs to be sure that it's actually the source, the exact source that was intended when the, uh, when the project was registered. It's a security check. So we have to compute SHA-512 uh, and 12 uh, sum. So let's do this for my source archive. Uh, where is it? Okay, so this is the checksum. It's very secure. Okay, so now I've added the sum. I'm so it's great. A liar. Oh no, it's not this one. <laughs> Yeah, this one. So uh, I have the sources and uh, and so some some sources. Uh, now I should be able to build it. <laughs> but no, no, I forgot an important step, which is telling a liar that my pro my project depends on other projects. So it's it's important so that a liar actually when it gets my project, it also downloads. ADATML, the ADATML pro project and the APDF one. So actually it was wrong. So let's fix it. Let's fix this here. So how do we declare dependencies? Well, it's simple. We say something like this without typos. And we say, okay, so the, the release 0 0.1 uh, of my project depends on, so it's ADATML. And we depend on, so here we, we, we depend on version one. And this is a kind of special syntax to give constraints about, because generally you can depend on version, uh, version 1.0 of a project, but this is also supposed to work with version 1.1, etc. You don't want to list every release possible. So there is a special uh, DSL to express the dependencies. I won't cover it here. And so APDF. If I remember correctly, it's 5.0.0. I'm not sure. Let's try. Oh, but wait. I can ask a layer. No, so I'm at. Show. Yeah, show. APDF, it's version currently. Okay, I can read it here, but. Yeah, it's 5. 5, 0, 0. Yeah, five oh, yes, great. So it's 5, not 9. Uh, great. Okay, so this is my new index. Now let's try again to get the project and build it. So I can use, I don't remember if it's build or compile. Okay, thanks. And what's wrong? Could not resolve the innovation. Ah, I, uh, it's, no, it's not supposed, there is no, I, ah, yes, right. ADATML is not, it's not version 0, uh, it's not 1.0, it's 0 0.1. Sorry about this. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, so it's uh, now the now the dependencies have been correctly set up. Alar is uh, able to uh, properly set up the project. And now, yes, it worked. We have our output uh, the PDF. Uh, Okay, so it's more or less simple. There are several gotchas, and we are, are running out details. But uh, this is a quick, that was a quick demo of how to contribute a project to the uh, outer world. Yep. You want to? Yeah, we'll finish with the website. Yes. Uh, thank you. So as you can see, the process is a bit uh, tedious to, to contribute, and that's why, uh, as Alejandro said, that's one of the things we want to improve in uh, 2020, is make, it, uh, make this process easier and, and quicker. Uh, so to end the presentation, uh, I'm going to show you the, um, the prototype, or more or less proof of concept website that we have on. So it's uh, at alayer.ada.dev. Uh, so this is the main page. Uh, it's actually a copy of the README from the repository. So you have instructions to get started, how to compile a layer and how to start using it. Uh, then you have two main pages. You have the crates, uh, which is the list of crates available in the system, and you also have a, a search. Um, so if, you, if we look at the crates, so here you have uh, all the, 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 the projects that are actually in a layer available today. Uh, so we have the list here, and then we are going to open one of them. Uh, and so you have at the top, you have some, the, actually the information that you saw uh, Pierre-Marie enter in the TOML file, you can find it uh, here. So we have the name, we have the short description, website, etc. Uh, and then you can also put a long description with a markdown format to provide information to your users, etc. Uh, so this one has no dependency, but the dependencies are also, also uh, listed here, and you can click to navigate the dependency. Uh, you can also have tags uh, to be able to search for other projects uh, related to this one. Uh, and so that's going to be the last one. Actually, it's, it's uh, when you click on a tag, it's like searching in the, the search box, and you can see you can uh, see the, the, for instance, here I typed uh, game, and I see all the game-related uh, crates available. Um, and so when you contribute uh, uh, a crate to the index, it will automatically every day regenerate the website to have your, your crate available. Uh, and so I think that's it for our presentation. Uh, we are really excited about Alayer because uh, we think it's a game changer for the uh, EDA ecosystem and uh, hopefully will make it a lot easier for people to collaborate uh, with EDA. And so as Alejandro said, now we are uh, in an open uh, beta period, so we expect a lot of feedback from, uh, from you all and, uh, of course, uh, new projects to put in the, uh, in the index. Thank you. Maybe I should, maybe I should add? Um, yes. If, no, if you want to, uh, sorry. So if you want to, uh, to check it out, go to the, uh, uh, to the Alayer project from the Alayer project uh, projects on GitHub. <laughs> and so if you if you have issues, you can open issues directly on GitHub. And uh, yeah, that's right. that, that was the... Yeah, that's, the, that's the, the right way to give feedback is to go to this repository and open issues and or even pull requests if you want to contribute. That's, uh, that would be great. Uh, yeah, thank you, Pierre-Marie. That was useful. Thank you. Do we have time for questions? Yes. So I, I'm starting here. Um, as far as I remember, you, have, you are using the default PPR files that comes with the project uh, in your view. Uh, right. So the question is, are we using the default GPR file that come with uh, each project? Uh, so yes, that's right. Uh, we, we try to not um, uh, have specific requirements. Um, uh, for a layer in each project. So in theory, if you are already using GPR build to compile your project, uh, it should work uh, in, uh, in a layer as well. well. My actual question to this is, um, is it an option for you to make some restriction on what can be in there? The problem with GPR build is that it is near to impossible to override some values that are defined inside the GPR file. 
So for example, if the developer says this is a dynamic library, it will always be a dynamic library. And in right. some context, for example, you need a static library. So you have to build, you, you write your, your completely own GPR pattern. Okay, so the question is about uh, configuration of the GPR build project. For instance, you can have uh, variables to say that you want a static library or a dynamic library. Uh, the answer is that you have some ways to declare those, uh, those variables in the TOML files, actually. So you specify in, in the in layer, you specify that this project has different options. Uh, and, and so they are visible from the, from the alayer uh, point of view. Uh, you can also, you want to talk about this? Uh, yes, yeah, so yeah, actually, you can, and, and that's the way. So in, in, the, uh, in your alayer toml file, you actually declare what are the variables from your project file. Uh, and then it, with alayer build, you can specify them like you would do with uh, GPR build. Yeah, it's so it's, depends. yeah. It still depends on the, on the library. The problem is that if you need a specific dependency, and the dependency doesn't define what you need with the dependency of your project, for example, if you're targeting a specific so, okay. So I'm not sure uh, where you're going. So you just said if you, if your uh, dependency doesn't specify what you need, right? There's a problem. Well, we had we had this that we needed um, to compile our dependencies with um, positions independent or ex independent executable. Okay. <laughs> the library didn't define anything that we could tell the compiler. Okay, compile this library with, with minus. Okay. So so I think I think the answer is. Um, uh, I don't know, but maybe we can talk after because it's a bit complex. Uh, so there is also there's also going to be, in my opinion, um, uh, a discussion between people contributing uh, libraries and people uh, using them. So if you find a library uh, in a layer that doesn't have what you need, you should contact the maintainer and say, "Hey, maybe you should add this and for the next release, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. But uh, it's 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 so far we are. Uh, Let's say it's, uh, we're not looking that much uh, into the details on, of how things are built uh, and, and so on and so forth. And also, yeah, we are relying on GPR builds, so if there's a uh, limitation with GPR builds, we have to deal with them, more or less. Yes? Maybe on a bit related note, uh, is there a plan to integrate the modifications and like, work with the GPR file even further? Because when you do a liar with, why does it is there a reason why it doesn't add the width to the GPR file? And the other way around, if you, if you create a new project and you already have a GPR file, you should determine the dependencies. At this point, the reason is that I don't like tools that modify my files. So when I did this, uh, files that Alliar generates are as complete as possible, but my files, my project file is not modified. We discussed sometimes about this. We might perhaps add some switch that you tell Ally, okay, go ahead and modify my project file. I'm okay with that, for example. But that's the actual reason right now. Yeah, I cannot really imagine somebody doing like a liar with and then not adding it to yeah. file. Yeah, yeah. This, th this happens. This happens. So yeah, the, the one, one something specific as well is that sometimes from one uh, alayer crate you will have uh, several uh, GPR files and you don't necessarily want to use all of them. So it's not it's not uh, uh, we are living in a, in, a, in an ecosystem where there are already projects out there and uh, they do not uh, necessarily fit perfectly the the alayer uh, scheme. So there are there are things that are you know a bit different from the the basic case that we show here, which is a one uh, one project with a one project file and, uh, and and more easy to do. But uh, these GPR files they are not listed. Like for, for me, it would be nice. Like hey, if the GPR files were listed in the in the crate, like what I can do with it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
so you have to manually add it to the GPL to your own project file. And yes, uh, the suggestion is to inform the user that the, the dependency dependency that you just added has all those project files available for use. Yeah, cool. And so, uh, second, no, sorry, there was a second question that was, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, uh, couldn't a layer read an existing project file and guess what packages are, uh, sh should be added as, as dependencies? So. It could, but it, um, you don't have the version information in the GPL file. So, for instance, if you, your project file depends on the ADATML library, which version should I layer? We could add the heuristics and so on, but it's getting much more complex uh, than the other. So it's, uh, it, it, would, it would sound nice as a feature and uh, useful, but it's not uh, clear how, how it should work exactly. Right, right. The hints could be definitely useful. And actually, what you said about uh, the, you know, telling the users there are this and that uh, project file available. Actually, we do have the list of project file in the TOML. Uh, it's available. So that's, I think, yeah, that's something that's uh, definitely doable. So I invite you actually to open an issue and uh, <laughs> and, sh and share your feedback. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to implement it, uh, that's, that's fine as well. Um, uh, I have yes. one question. Um, regarding the maintainer and your um, provide the object to a layer, and there was the mentioning that uh, the maintainer has an email login and it can't be changed. So once okay. you're it declared to be the maintainer, and then you just kind of lose interest, what happens? So the, the question is about the... Is it that somehow somebody else can take over? Yeah, I get it. So the question is about the uh, maintainers and maintainers logins in the, in the TOML file. Um, so uh, we said that it's, it's to make sure that uh, you are the owner of the, the TOML file and that uh, you're the only one who can change it. Uh, actually, what's happened, so we have, we have a maintainer field with emails uh, because we want... Uh, to be able to contact you at some point. We also have maintainers logins with uh, GitHub logins, and that's uh, actually for automated checks. So when you uh, contribute to the Allier index, you do a pull request, and there's a check that you are allowed to modify this, uh, this, this file. Uh, but actually, uh, if you want to transfer the, the ownership, you can modify the file to remove your name and put someone else uh, login. And that's how you would transfer the the, the ownership uh, and uh, so far we'll see in the future but so far everything is uh, moderated so we have, a, we have a manual review so even if someone uh, disappears we can uh, decide to transfer the ownership at some point uh, nothing is really uh, set, set in stone for the maintainers we can, we can work around uh, things like that yes Okay, so the question is, do we plan to package ADA Drivers Library, which is a, a project for embedded development uh, in ADA? Uh, the answer is yes, but uh, the, the real question is how? Uh, because uh, I, I, actually, I actually started, there's already uh, embedded uh, crates uh, available drivers for the SMD51 microcontroller. Uh, the problem right now is that the architecture of the ADA drivers library project does not fit very well with uh, with layer because uh, it's not modular enough. Uh, so we have to find a good way to do it, but uh, yes, absolutely, uh, it will be in layer at some point. Yes. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.